The sun beats down mercilessly from a cloudless sky. It hasn't rained in this arid region for months. In an environment where human beings couldn't survive for more than a day, cactuses feel very much at home. They are adaptable and tough. They're able to grow in places where nothing else could exist. Scientists are still unsure when cactuses began life. They think their origins go back some 30 to 60 million years. Their evolution was triggered by global warming. Former tropical deciduous trees were forced to adapt to the new conditions in the dry zones. Cactuses originated in the tropical and subtropical regions between Mexico and Argentina. The cactus family includes about 3,000 species, which can be divided up into three groups. First, the Paresquia, known as leaved cactuses. They grow like bushes and still have leaves. Then come the Opuntia, or prickly pear cactuses. They are particularly tough and can stand both extreme heat and extreme cold. Finally, there are the Cactaceae, the group of cactuses with the most species and greatest variety. These include the bulbous barrel cactuses and the tall, slender pillar cactuses. The biologist, Dr. Edward Anderson, works at the Desert Botanical Garden in Phoenix, Arizona. He has spent more than 40 years studying these prickly plants. I grew up in Southern California where cacti were a common part of the environment. So cacti were an element of my life that I grew up with, not recognizing how exciting they were until I really began to look at them and say, oh, wow, there are some interesting things here. Let's go at them. Cactuses have learned to survive in dry regions. Their extensive root system sucks up the water available from the rare rainfall in the best possible way. The 20 meter high saguaro cactus can absorb several hundred liters of water at once and store it in its stem. You will notice that the stem is made up of a series of ribs and valleys between. Now this is like a pleat or an accordion. And so the shallow roots, when it rains, are able to take in water quickly, absorb it into the large stem, which expands with the ribs or pleats becoming wider apart. Then as the dry season comes on and the water is used, the pleats or ribs get closer and closer together. A wonderful adaptation for survival in a harsh desert environment. Cactuses belong to the family of succulents. These are plants whose tissue can store water. When it rains, the water is sucked up and transported via the vascular bundle system in the cactus. Finally, the liquid is stored in the tissue, known as the water parenchyma. A saguaro cactus can survive for at least one year on its supplies. A thick leather-like skin also protects the cactus from losing water or drying out. Another masterpiece of evolution is found in cactus thorns. So as to lose as little water as possible, the leaves of the original cactuses turned into thorns with the passing of time. Thorns provide the sun with a much smaller evaporation area than leaves. But Paresquia cactuses are the exception. They have only half completed this process of change. Paresquia perhaps represents the ancestor, or at least what the ancestor might have looked like. We have no fossil record to know for sure, but this plant is believed to contain many of the primitive characters possibly represented in the ancestor of cacti. Now, why is it a cactus? Because it has the typical areole, the spine producing portion, just like all other cacti. But you'll notice here that it has two kinds of leaves, the flat 
green leaf like most flowering plants, but also the very highly specialized leaf or spine typical of cacti. Cactus blooms sometimes have brilliant colors, but beauty in the natural world is always functional. The bright colors show insects that there is a source of food here. Some species of cactuses only open their flower cups at night. They then use fragrance rather than color to attract insects. Large cactuses in particular have adapted to nocturnal bats during the course of evolution. Their flowers are constructed so that bats can suck out the nectar while they are flying. If they fly onto the next cactus, they transport part of the pollen and automatically pollinate the next flower. Bats and insects ensure cactuses are propagated. But many types of cactuses do without this assistance. They propagate themselves. Cacti also have another wonderful ability, and this is uh, shown, for example, in the prickly pears and choyas as uh, excellent examples. Uh, they reproduce vegetatively or asexually. Uh, you can simply take a portion of the stem, a stem segment, break it off, fall, it falls to the ground or uh, is planted in the ground, and it grows into a new plant. It's an exact duplicate of the parent but it is a method by which cacti have been highly successful in, a, in establishing themselves over vast areas of land. Cactuses are masters in the art of survival. But Edward Anderson also knows that many species are threatened with extinction through building projects, pesticides, and cactus lovers who simply steal them. With their extraordinary characteristics and unique shape, cactuses are some of the most fascinating plants found on Earth. For North American Indians, cactuses were a sign of continuity and a symbol of eternal life. <laughs>